Good morning to our friends here in the building, our friends on Zoom and on Facebook. Let us begin our worship with our praises of this morning played by our instrumental ensemble.
Why? Why do you have time off from school? For what purpose? Thanksgiving. So what's Thanksgiving all about? Giving thanks. What else is it about? I mean, that's basically what it is. But what do we remember on this for this holiday? Remember? So traditionally, this holiday remembers a group of people that came to Plymouth, Massachusetts, called the Pilgrims. Right? They were separatists, and we <clears throat> remember that they came this area because they wanted to live, they wanted to have some freedom. They wanted to live in a way that they felt God was calling them to live. They wanted to have a better life for their kids, right? And it was a long trip and it was really, they suffered and they struggled. And when they got here, they met the Wampanoag who lived here already. And the Wampanoag actually helped them at the beginning of that when they first came to Plymouth. So it occurred to me that the pilgrims came to here, came to Plymouth, Massachusetts, because they wanted a better life for themselves and their families, right? And I would bet that everybody in this room, their families came here to have a better life. Either just recently, in within our, like their lifetime, they came from a long way away to be here, and it was hard. And some of us, it was hundreds of years ago that our families decided to come here. So on this Thanksgiving day, I want to think about how we are thankful to have a place where we can live, for the most part, okay, right, in peace. We have a community here that loves us and supports us. And that all of us came from someplace else to be here. And there's still people that from all over the world want to come here for a better life, right? They're no different than our families, right? So this week, as you celebrate Thanksgiving, you can think about the pilgrims or not, it doesn't matter. But being thankful and recognizing the blessings that we have that's what this week is about. Okay? And the separatists, the pilgrims, the separatists, they were related to the early Baptists who were also separatists. So we can, we, our history, our religious history is connected to the pilgrims. Congregationalists like to call them for themselves, but we are connected to them. <laughs> Let's most gracious God, we thank you so much for your many blessings. We are so thankful for our very lives. And we thank you for <clears throat> the opportunity to live in peace. And we pray for everybody around the world who is still struggling and, and working hard to find a place of peace and, <clears throat> and safety for their families. We ask that you be with all of them and <clears throat> be with us as we share your love with the world. Amen. So you all get to go to your Sunday school classroom, and we will sing Jesus Loves Little Children. Oh, and pick up your robes. If you have robes, take them with you. Okay.
There are a few folks that we can keep in our mind, in our prayers. Um, we pray for Fred and for Frank and for Laura and for Nage and Rebecca and her family, for Chuck and Ray and Kathy. And we pray for the people of Western New York State who are under feet and feet and feet of snow. And we pray for the people of Burma and of Ukraine. Let us sing our call to prayer.
reading comes from Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 1, verses 11 through 20. Pastor Fise will read it in Ren, and then I will read it in English. The Nyayi is a sweet of the Ramadu, Utho Eda, Nadi Kalose, Nawa Kalabaka, and me. ตัวตัวไปเนาะตัวไปเนาะตัวพอเท่าเกียร์นะกระเซาะเด็กกระเซาะอ่ะนี่กระเซาะเจอสมุทรสิทธิ์เจอคิสีเนาะดอสุทธ
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be accepted. In thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. On this Sunday, we have so much for which to be thankful. There certainly is a lot going on in the world that is concerning, but still, there's much for which to be thankful. As a planet, we can be thankful for the coalition of nations and NGOs that are working together to reduce climate change, reduce hunger, and end aggression and war. Just these past two weeks, there were two big conferences of the G20 and the COP27. Working, nations working together to try to solve these global problems. As a nation, we're thankful that we got through the election season without much mishap, that the pandemic has loosened its grip on us, although not completely, but at least it's looser than it was, and that it just might be that inflation is just maybe starting to go down just a wee little bit. We can be thankful for that. As a congregation, we are thankful for the opportunity to worship together, to see and hear our children and youth, to sing together and to pray together, and to have this building and the resources to share God's love in the world. As individuals, we're thankful for our lives, for getting up this morning, and for our many blessings. Our scripture text for today points out to us that all that we are and all that we have, indeed all of creation, is made possible through Christ. And for this, we are deeply thankful. Paul's letter to the Colossians was written to a community that was new in the faith. It was a young church full of recently converted pagans who were confused by claims from other faiths. They had experienced the spirit of Christ in their midst, but they were unsure of how Christ actually worked in the world. There were some other teachers that were, that were confusing them. The purpose of Paul's letter was to affirm to them that Christ is Lord over everything. And that nothing, nothing is outside of Christ's care and concern. The first part of today's text is a blessing. It's actually a benediction, but we think of that as something that happens at the end. But a benediction just means a blessing and an encouragement that all they needed is given to them by God through Christ. And so they're called to give thanks to God who had rescued them and brought them into the community of God's beloved son. And who's that? Jesus, our Christ. The text then lifts up this incredible passage that may be an early Christian hymn. Like the prologue to the Gospel of John, this hymn declares that creation happens through Christ and for Christ. It may have been patterned on Proverbs 8, uh, which we explored earlier this fall in September. It's hard to see if, you're, if you've got the Pew Bibles and looking at, looking at it, it's hard to see the structure in the Pew Bibles. But the hymn is carefully constructed into two parallel sections connected by a central claim. And if you this afternoon go back and look at it, you can notice the repetitions of he is and for in him and through him. It's in the first section and the second section. The first section, verses 15 and 16, proclaims Christ as firstborn of all creation and the creator of all things in heaven and on earth, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. And the second section, verses 18 through 20, proclaims Christ as the head of the church, the firstborn of the dead, reconciling all things, whether on earth or in heaven, 
by making peace through the blood of his cross. Now, when we look at parallels, verse 15 and verse 19, Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, and in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. When we look at these two images together, we see that all of God, all of God's power, all of God's mercy, all of God's intentions, all of God's love, can be experienced in the person of Jesus, who was born a vulnerable baby, who spent his life talking about love, who chose to suffer and die on a cross, and who was raised from the dead. It is through Jesus' life that we know God. As the image of the invisible God, Jesus shows us the heart of God. The text lifts up another parallel between in Christ, all things in heaven and on earth were created. Things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. And through him, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. In Christ, all things have been created, and through Christ, all things have been reconciled. That means that there's nothing outside of Christ. There are no evil powers or chaotic monsters in heaven or on earth that can defeat Christ. And where things have been become disordered or transgressions have occurred when, when people have fallen short, Christ's great love as seen on the cross has reconciled everything to God. Not just humanity, but all of creation not just on earth, but in heaven as well. Evil has been vanquished. Even though we see it around, it is not ultimate. It cannot win. It has been defeated. Now, the centerpiece of this amazing hymn is verse 17. Christ himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Christ is the glue. Christ is the glue that holds the universe together. And the spark of Christ can be seen in everything. So this means that we can see our lives and all of creation as Christ filled. In our lives, we can trust that no matter what occurs, no matter how chaotic or overwhelming it seems, Christ is present, active and working toward redemption and wholeness. Christ's love surrounds us. Christ's grace empowers us. And we can see those around us as Christ filled as well. The friend that calls, the stranger that smiles, the author who makes us think in a book or a media post, all of these are connected to us in Christ. Everybody. In our everyday lives, we're given a new lens with which to see our coworkers and the people in the grocery store and the folks with whom we disagree. We are connected to them in Christ. Now, we think about how we're connected with other Christians through our shared faith, although sometimes we struggle, even that, to, to feel connected to other Christians if they don't believe exactly what we believe. But we are connected to them. We all love Jesus. But this hymn proclaims that we're connected to everyone in creation, regardless of their faith or lack thereof. We are to see Christ in everyone, not just those who believe as we do. 
No one is outside of the love of God made known to us through Christ. And for this, we are thankful. Not only all the people, but all of creation is Christ filled and connected through Christ. When we walk out in nature or look through our window, we don't just see a bunch of stuff to be used or admired or ignored, but revelations of the love of Christ. We see Christ in the beauty of a sunset, in the strength of a mountain but also in the humble and essential ways that nature supports and interacts with all of life, such as the way that our lungs are able to drink in oxygen from the air. Have you ever stopped to think about how extraordinary that is? Or the way a vaccine can strengthen our immune system. It's extraordinary, yes? In the immense complexity of the universe and in the minute complexity of our DNA, we can see Christ working to bring order out of chaos and delighting in our ever-changing beauty. And for this, we are thankful. Because of our connections in Christ to everything in creation, we're called not only to be thankful, but to care for creation as Christ does. Just to love our world as Christ loves us and to serve creation as we would serve Christ with loving and attentive devotion. If we really see Christ in everything, we really see Christ in polar bears and in the rainforest and in the atmosphere. We'll see beyond our own self-interest, beyond our own convenience to make a significant difference in how we live among the other lives on this planet. We will delight in the world around us and we'll care for it as a precious gift rather than grudgingly change our habits out of fear, which is somehow sometimes the way we approach these things. We will raise our eyes from the screens of technology that are useful. And we're glad that for some of you, this is how you're worshiping with us. But our screens sometimes numb us to the wonder and the beauty that's around us. The mountain views or the sparkling eyes of the person speaking to you. We can see Christ everywhere. We can see love everywhere. And we can cherish it as Christ cherishes us. And we can be deeply thankful. Let us pray. Cosmic Christ, we are in awe of your great love for us and for all of creation. Thank you for this love which binds us together and sustains us all. Help us to see you in everything. Help us to care for our world as you care. May our awareness of you be strengthened so that we can meet any obstacle with your grace and peace. Amen. Today, after worship, we have three fun, cool, important opportunities. One, folks are invited to stay in the sanctuary and help us decorate for um, Advent and Christmas. We've got stuff to put up front and stuff to put in the windows. Second opportunity is we are going to organize food baskets down in the kitchen. Yes? So we need help bringing the food. And thank you, everybody who brought food for the food um, for the Thanksgiving baskets. And so if you want to help organize that, you can go in the kitchen. The third thing is we're going to be reading through the Christmas pageant. So I invite and I ask, especially all the young people, to meet me in the narthex. And we're going to go up to the Sunday school classroom to read through the pageant and pick the parts. The pageant will be part of our worship service on December 18th. Um, and it's going to be a fun store. It's a fun pageant.
meaningful, important. So I ask young people to come and participate in it. Um, and if there are folks who aren't here today, but who might like to be in the pageant, please let me know that um, and we'll get a script to them. We do also need a volunteer who would be willing if there if we have food left over that was brought, um, if anybody would be willing to take any leftover food to the food bank tomorrow. So if anybody is going to be in Burlington and be willing to do that, um, please speak to Joanne Taylor. Tomorrow, um, there will not be Bible study and there will not be coffee hour on Thanksgiving, um, but those things will start the next week. And our unified governing board, which traditionally would be tomorrow, is not tomorrow. It's going to be next Monday night at um, November 28th uh, on Zoom at 7 p.m. Upcoming second hours. Next week is Advent, which is so exciting. And after worship next week, we'll have our intergenerational Advent workshop. So folks um, from the Karen service can just come at 11. Folks who are here stay. Well, that time in between our two services, we'll be making Advent wreaths, Christmas ornaments, um, Advent calendars down in Fellowship Hall. So please plan to come. It, it's going to be fun. And the next Sunday, December 4th, between the two services, we'll have the opportunity to um, buy jewelry and ornaments from that are made in Thailand by an organization called Nightlight, uh, which is a ministry of American Baptist churches. It is a ministry to um, women who have been trafficked in Thailand. And so they make this jewelry and we and ornaments and we can buy it and it supports uh, their work there. So that will be on December 4th. Uh, if you're not going to be here in person, there also will be an online uh, option to participate in that. Any other announcements that I need to make? Oh, yes. Um, last week, we learned that um, Leonardo Sosa, who was one of, uh, was a part of um, our congregation, was a Cuban family, new, new Americans that were uh, settled by First Baptist. Um, Leonardo uh, died recently. And in the back table, we have some articles from the newspaper uh, from when he, he arrived and um, stories about him. So if you're interested in that, it's on the back table over there. Our closing hymn is Holy, Holy, Holy in the blue hymnal, number 136, and in the Karen hymnal, number 141. <laughs>
in all aspects of our lives. And may our feet be guided in the ways of peace.